the effects of standardized ileal digestible lysine level with or without tribasic copper chloride on growth performance, carcass characteristics, and fat quality in finishing pigs. K.F. Coble will be presenting. This is a collaboration project with Micronutrients and Michigan State University. Copper is an essential trace mineral that has been included in premixes in finishing swine and it is added above the pig's basal requirement has been shown to increase growth performance. Recent research completed here at Kansas State University has suggested that when copper in the form of tribasic copper chloride is added to finishing diets, it may provide benefits during the finishing period for a much longer duration than previously reported by previous experiments. Further, Research in poultry has suggested that when tribasic copper chloride is added to diets that are marginal in lysine, growth performance is similar to those fed a diet that is adequate in lysine without tribasic copper chloride. In the previous experiment, th the diets used were formulated at 0.05% below the estimated SID lysine level for each dietary phase. So, no data is available to determine if tribasic copper chloride added to diets formulated below a pig's standard ileal digestible lysine requirement will elicit a greater response than when added to an SID lysine adequate diet. So the objective of this experiment was to determine the effects of added tribasic copper chloride and increasing standardized ileal digestible lysine on growth performance, carcass characteristics, liver copper concentration, and carcass fat quality in finishing pigs. 1,248 pigs with an initial body weight of 29 kilos were used in a 120-day study. These pigs were housed in a commercial finishing barn in southwest Minnesota. Pins of pigs were randomly assigned to one of six dietary treatments and balanced on average pin weight in a randomized complete block design. These pins contain 26 pigs with 8 pins per treatment. The dietary treatments consisted of organized in a 2 by 3 factorial of 2 levels of copper from tribasic copper chloride, either 0 or 150 parts per million added copper, or 3 levels of SID lysine, either 192.5 or 85% of the estimated requirement. These diets were fed in five dietary phases, contained 17 parts per million of copper from the basal diet in the form of copper sulfate, and five parts per million ractopamine hydrochloride was added in the last phase of this experiment. Here, as we look at the treatment diets, you'll see that these were a corn-soybean meal-based diet with 15% bakery meal and 30% dried distiller grains with solubles. And in the column to the right, you will see that the estimated SID lysine level at 100% were formulated to these levels throughout the finishing phase. It's important to note that in phase 5, we did formulate to a 0 0.90 SID lysine level in the last finishing diet. As we look at the calculated analysis, you will see here that the SID lysine level did increase as we formulated for that and consequently the total lysine also increased in the diet. Here as we look at the copper analysis taking into account the endogenous copper which will be brought in not only by the premix but also by that of the ingredients that were used in formulation these values are very similar to what we would expect when we do not add additional copper provided by that of the trace mineral premix or those endogenous ingredients. However, when we add 150 parts per million of copper from Tribasic, again, we see values that are very similar to what we would expect taking into account those additional levels of added copper. Pins of pigs were weighed and feeders measured approximately every 21 days to determine growth performance. And on day 92, according to standard farm protocol, the three heaviest pigs in each pin were weighed and sold. On the final day, day 120, pin weights were taken and pigs were transported to a commercial packing plant 
for processing and data collection. Three pigs, however, were subsampled from each pen before loading and transporting to the commercial packing plant in Worthington and sent to a different packing plant in Sioux Center, Iowa for some additional data collection. The three pigs transported to this second packing plant were used for collecting liver and fat samples. Livers were collected at harvest for determining copper, zinc, and iron concentrations, as well as being able to allow us to determine a color reference score in the form of L star, A star, and B star. Fat samples from all layers were collected from both the jowl and back fat of each pig once they entered the cooler and were used to determine and complete a fatty acid profile and also further to be able to determine the iodine value for each fat depot. The experimental data was analyzed utilizing the Proxmix procedure of SAS. It was analyzed as a randomized complete block designed with pins serving as the experimental unit and initial average body weight as the blocking factor. Linear and quadratic interactions were tested to determine if SID lysine affected the response to tribasic copper chloride, as well as the main effects of tribasic copper chloride and linear and quadratic effects of SID lysine. Hot carcass weight did serve as a covariate for the analysis of carcass traits. I'd like to take just a brief second to set up the slides here as we have the response criteria on the vertical axis and the dietary treatments on the horizontal axis. The blue bars are associated with no additional added copper and the green bars are associated with 150 parts per million of copper from tribasic copper chloride. For average daily gain during the early finishing period from day 0 to 70, there was a significant tribasic by lysine linear interaction for average daily gain as we saw an, a significant increase in the magnitude of response uh, in, with pigs fed 150 parts per million of copper as we increase SID lysine and that magnitude was much bigger in response compared to those fed no additional copper and that is due to within the 100 percent SID lysine level pigs fed the copper had a much higher average daily gain compared to those fed no additional copper within 100% SID lysine. We also here saw a linear lysine effect as we increase SID lysine we have an improvement in average daily gain. As we look at feed efficiency here we have no copper response in the early finishing period however we do see a clear linear response an improvement in feed efficiency and gain to feed as we increase SID lysine level. During the late finishing period from days 70 to 120, here we see no significant difference between any of the dietary treatments for average daily gain. Also, for feed efficiency from day 70 to 20, here we see no improvements in feed efficiency between dietary treatments either. Now, please remember that these diets in the phase 5 were formulated to 0.90 SID lysine and this could have affected the results. As we look at average daily gain overall we see a approaching a tendency for a copper by lysine linear interaction however we do see a clear lysine response as we increase SID lysine we do improve average daily gain overall and similar to the initial period from day 0 to 70 here again we see a clear response to copper as we increase average daily gain within the 100 percent SID lysine level treatments. As we look at feed efficiency here we do not see a copper response however as we increase SID lysine level we do see an improvement in feed efficiency in the form of gain to feed. As we look at final body weight you will remember that we did see a significant improvement in average daily gain with SID as we increase SID lysine so it's not surprising that we see an improvement in final body weight on day 120 as we increase SID lysine and also within the 100 percent SID lysine level we do see about a three kilogram improvement in final body weight when we do add tribasic copper chloride to the diet compared to when tribasic copper chloride is left out of the diet. 
These results also provided similar responses within hot carcass weight as we see a linear increase in hot carcass weight as we increase SID lysine. And again, within the 100% SID lysine level, we here again see almost a 3 kilogram improvement in hot carcass weight when we add tribasic copper chloride at 150 parts per million to the diet. As we look at loin depth, here we see a linear lysine by copper interaction as when copper is not in the diet and we increase SID lysine, we get a reduction in loin depth. However, when copper is added to the diet and we increase SID lysine level, we do see an improvement in loin depth. Here also again, within the 100% SID lysine level, we see a significant improvement in loin depth when we add tribasic copper chloride to the diet. As we look at carcass lean, here we see a significant quadratic interaction between lysine and copper, and that is mainly due to the response within the 92.5% SID lysine level as we see an increase when we add copper to the diet within that level of SID lysine, and we do not see an improvement in carcass lean whenever we do not have that added copper in the diet. As we look at gel iodine value, here we do see a linear lysine by copper interaction as we saw a worsening in gel iodine value as SID lysine increased within the diets that contained copper. However, we saw relatively no difference or no change in the gel iodine value within SID lysine level in the diets that did not contain additional copper from tribasic copper chloride. As we look at back fat iodine value, however, here we see no significant differences between either dietary treatments. As we look at liver copper concentration, it's not surprising that pigs fed the added copper in the form of tribasic copper chloride had an increase in liver copper concentration compared to those fed no additional copper. However, there was a lysine quadratic within tribasic copper chloride, and that's mainly due to the response within the 92.5% percent SID lysine level having much higher liver copper concentration than the other dietary treatments. As we look at liver zinc concentration, here we see a tendency for a copper effect as pigs fed added copper had a lowering or a reduction in liver zinc concentration compared to those fed no additional copper. Here we also see a tendency as we increase SID lysine to have an increase in liver zinc concentration as well. As we look at A star values, now for reference, a negative value would be associated with a green color and a positive value would be associated with a more red color. Here we see a reduction in A star value when copper is added in the diet compared to those fed no additional copper. Also, there is a linear lysine tendency as we increase SID lysine, we tend to reduce the A star value for the liver. Now, it's important to note that these livers would not be green, it's just the intensity of the red would be lessened. So in summary, increasing SID lysine, increased average daily gain, feed efficiency, final body weight, and percent lean. Also, pigs fed 150 parts per million of copper from tribasic copper chloride within the 100% SID lysine treatment had increased growth rate from day 0 to 70 that was maintained for the overall day 0 to 120 period, which resulted in a heavier final live weight and hot carcass weight. Back fat IV was not influenced by treatment, however, Jow fat IV did increase with increasing SID lysine when tribasic was included in the diet. Results from this experiment suggest that SID lysine should not be limited in finishing pig diets regardless of whether tribasic copper chloride is included in the diet or not. This is evident by that the growth response to copper when lysine was fed at 100% of the estimated requirement was much higher but not when fed at 85 or 92 and a half percent of the estimated requirement. Growth performance and carcass weight and lean were maximized when SID lysine levels were at 100 percent of their estimated requirement as well. With that I'd like to thank you for your attention 
and I'd like to thank Micronutrients for partial funding of this trial, as well as the graduate students and the faculty involved. Thank you.